We welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. So this morning I'm going to teach on healing. And of all things, when I'm getting, learn, getting, used, getting ready for this, I get attacked. Ricky gets attacked. Everybody gets attacked. Don't feel it's the devil. Well, it is the devil, but God's saying to you, I want you to know I'm your healer. I'm here for you. I'm here to touch you. That's what my message is called this morning, The Touch. And I have titled, We Have Never Seen Anything Like This Before. So get ready. We're going to see miraculous healings, just for, not just for little things, but miraculous healings. Legs are going to be healed. Different things are going to be healed. No matter what you ask God for, he's going to heal it. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you hurting. He wants you miraculously healed this morning. And that's what I'm going to preach on this morning. It's going to be all scripture. So get ready. If you want to have a pen, get it out. If not, get the CD. Because you need to learn these scriptures. They're very important. And they're all in the New Testament. God's taken us in a new area. So get ready. Get ready. Amen. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. And first thing we're going to talk about is mercy. Mercy means compassion. And compassion means to be kind. Wanting to help the people in per- person, not somebody 10 years from now, now. He wants you to be ready, prepared to help them this morning. So in, in that chap- chapter, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, it says this, two blind men followed Jesus, calling out, have mercy on us, son of God. Have you ever done that? Come on, be honest with me. Come on, you've been in places and you say, oh, God, I need you. You've got to be here. I, help me. And he does. He hears every voice. He hears every little teardrop that you, you drop out of your eyes. He hears every that. And that's what he's, say, he's saying here. These blind men are hollering out, have mercy on us, son of David. And he asked them, do you believe Do you believe this morning? We have to believe this morning because we know what our God's about to do and what he's already doing. And it it says in here, I have down here, faith in my power to cure. When Jesus said to them, do you believe? In other words, do you have faith in me? Jesus is saying this morning, in his power to cure you. And he said to, to do this, he said, they said, yes, Lord, They replied. Are you saying yes this morning? You're asking God for something special in your life. Carla back here just had an operation. And I know she's been calling out to God. And we all do. But God is right there for you. He's there to touch you. You just have to believe. Sometimes it looks like he's not touching you. But he is. He's right there every second of the day. And Jesus said to him, Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your... According to your faith, not his faith. Did you hear what that said? According to your faith, not my faith. I can pray for you, but when you believe yourself that God's going to do miraculous things, that when he's going to touch you. And that's what he's saying, these blind men. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, Will it be done to you? And what happened? Their faith, their eyes, their sight was restored. God is ready to touch you no matter what you need. He's right there. He's there to walk beside you. He's there to be everything that you need. And that's all you have to do. You have to say, Lord, I believe. Do you really believe this morning? Are you asking God for something then and say, well, maybe if it happens, we'll do that. Come on, we're human. We'll say, okay, well, God, if you want to. No, God wants to, but he wants to hear what you want. He wants to know if you have the faith for him to come and touch you. Amen? Then in Matthew chapter 14, verse 36, the people brought all, wow, not just one or two people, they brought all the sick to Jesus. And and they begged him to let let him see the sick. 
Jesus said, just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. All who touched him, not just a couple, all of you. You get a need in your body, or you have somebody that you need a prayer for, just pray for them. God said he's going to touch all of them. Do you get the word that's in this scripture this morning? Touch. Touch. If you touch something, you expect it to happen, right? So we ask, say to Jesus, touch me, then you should be expecting him to do the miraculous, whatever you're asking him for. Then we're going to go to Mark. We're going to jump into Mark. Chapter 1, verse 30. You know, we all pretty much know this story, but I need to, we all need to go over and over all the scriptures. No matter how many times you've read it, no matter how many times you think you know it, go back and read it again. God has something in there of every scripture. that if you, if you read the whole Bible clear through, then go back and read it through again. But read it asking God to show you what he wants you to have. And that's what he's saying here this morning. Simon Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a high fever. And they immediately told him of her. They didn't wait around, did they? What did it say? They immediately told him. That's what we need to do. <clears throat> we don't want to sit around and just say, well, when God comes, he'll touch me. No. Immediately, you want to ask him to do it, and he will do it when you ask him. And that's what it's saying here. Immediately, they told him of her, and he came to her by the hand. He came and got her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately, what happened? Her fever left because he knew what he had inside of him. He knew he had God's power inside of him to heal her. And so he immediately, since he touched her, if, if somebody, you ask me to pray for you, you better believe with me that God's going to touch you. It's not going to be all my prayers. It's going to be your prayer and your belief. That's where we've got, got to come to. We've got to get a true belief in Jesus Christ. You know what? She got, she got completely, instantly healed. And you know what she did? She got up off of her bed, sickly bed, and she waited on all those men. Now, sometimes I wonder... I wonder about her. What's the matter with you, lady? Wait on the ladies, not the men. No, in the Bible times, ladies, the ladies definitely waited on the men. Amen? We went over to, um, what country was we in, Pastor? We were sitting at the table, and I was the only lady in there, and I couldn't figure out what in the world's going on in this house. I'm the only lady in this room, but all the ladies were in the kitchen preparing the food for the men. Now, I'm not lifting you men up any higher. Don't get, Jack, don't get your nose in the air and say, oh boy, I'm better than her because I'm not a lady. No. <clears throat> what was that? <laughs> but anyhow, David, you, you're learning, aren't you? <laughs> but anyhow, God nowadays is so different because he lifts every one of us up the same. Ladies, you're the same as the guy sitting beside you or the guy behind you or if your guy isn't even here, your husband's not here today, you have as much power in God as you, he has. Amen? You gotta pick it up and run with it. Come on, why do we have Pastor Jan? Come on, why do we have all you ladies, you ladies, you don't have to have P-A-S-T-O-R before your name. You're God's child. Come on, you're God's child. It doesn't matter what's behind your name or in front of your name. It's who you are in him. And that's what this lady did. She got up, and she, of course that's back then, that's when they believed that the women stayed in the kitchen and the men, men stayed in waiting to be fed. And I know that men like to eat. Come on. Mine likes to eat better than I do, so I know what it's all about. Amen? <laughs> but anyhow, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus this morning. He is the man in your life. Amen? Oh, well, my husband is. No, no he's second in your life. He's going to be second 
in your life after Friday. Okay? Jesus, always remember, Jesus is always number one. If you don't know who I'm talking about, Jill and David's getting married on Friday. Yay! Hallelujah! We're going to have fun, aren't we? Amen? You might have to hold me up behind the pulpit to say your vows, but I'll be here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> but anyhow, we've got to remember to give him praise this morning. Jesus is the one is meeting your needs this morning. He's here to lift you up. Then in verses 40 and 42, it says, And there came a leper to, to beseeching him. He knelt down before him and saying to him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Can you come to that point this morning? That you can bow down before God and say, God, I know, I know. You can touch me and make me clean. And that's what he's going to do this morning. He wants to touch you. He wants to make you clean. He wants to raise you up. I'm not saying you're a sinner. No matter what you have need of this morning, you take it to him because that's what he's here for. That's what he, the man saying to him, thou must make me clean. And Jesus was moved with compassion. I like the word compassion. You have compassion for somebody, that means you love them deeply and that's where Jesus is he loves us so deeply so kind and he looked at the man and he, he touched him and he saith unto him I will be thou clean and immediately there's the word again or instantly the leprosy left him and he was made clean and made whole but the man had to believe that Jesus was his healer this morning. Do you believe that this morning? You're sitting here. I know we go through things because we live in this life. We live, on, we live in this world. But Jesus is always there to touch us. Pastor had a real bad cold for about two or three days. But it, he just kept going. He got preached. You didn't, let, he didn't, you didn't go see him sit down and boo hoo and ball and say, Come and pray for me. I'm sick. No. He kept going, and we need to do that. I know we need to pray for us. I pray for yourself. Have somebody pray for you, but listen to me. Grab a hold of what has hold of you and say, no, 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 I'm going on. I'm going through because Jesus is going to touch me. Or maybe he's already touched you. So that's what we need to really receive this morning, that he wants to touch us today, every day, every hour. Let's go into Mark, chapter 2, verses 3 to 12. The man healed of a palsy because they pressed through. What did they do with him? They didn't walk him in. They couldn't get him in because there were so many people. What did they have to do? They had to carry him up the stairway, take him out on the roof, and lean, put him down in front of all the people. And that's what they did with him. And he said, say unto thee, Arise and get up and take thy bed and go thy way into thine own house. He didn't say to him, you've got to lay there for a week till you get better. <laughs> Jesus, you go to the doctor and sometimes he'll give you some pills and tell you, go home, Melissa, and go to bed. And sometimes we have to. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because God is by your side every second of the day, no matter what you do or where you go. He's there. And he told the men immediately... The man arose. He took up his bed and went forth in the, with them all. And so, in so much that they were all amazed. Not just the man that God healed. Remember now, when you see somebody in church or you pray for somebody and God heals them, let them know that you care, that you're amazed. These people were astounded. Some of them were dumbfounded. Ever anybody say to you, what's the matter with you? You dumbfounded? You didn't know what's going around here? Come on. Haven't you ever had somebody say that? Oh, yeah. Come on. We live in that world. But that's what happened here. They were filled with awe. And they glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion before and never seen anything like this. And we're going to see a lot of that. God's going to heal Broken legs, he's going to heal. You, some of you have really bad heart, and I know Brother uh, Rick's not here today because of his heart and different things. God's here to heal us. we got to get to the point 
through him, that when we ask him, we believe that he's going to do it. Come on, we have to believe. We don't just say, well, God's going to heal me. Oh, come on. Yes, he is. We have to believe this morning. That's what he's saying here. And when he said, I believe, and he immediately rose, instantly, instantly, God healed him. And that's what we're going to see today. God's going to start moving miraculously. He's already moving in this place. You come up and get prayed for. Don't tell me God don't heal you. If you don't take it and accept the healing, that's up to you. Come on. You have to accept your healing. You don't just say, well, God healed me. No. I thank God he has healed me. He's going to finish healing me. We've got to give him all the glory this morning. Nothing goes to man. Nothing goes to Nancy. Nothing goes to, um, what's your name? Magnolia. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm teasing her. But we can't give man glory. we got to give all the glory to God because he is our healer. He's the one that's raising us up this morning and taking us out. Amen? Let's look at Mark chapter 3, verse 10. <clears throat> he had healed many insomuch that they pressed upon him to touch him. And as many that had plagued, six people, all kinds, come crowding in upon him to touch him. Why were they crowding in? When they heard him teaching, when they saw him coming down the road, you know what they did? They all rushed to where Jesus was. They didn't wait for him to say something to them. They just wanted to t touch him. And that's all you have to do this morning. Yes, you pray and you ask him, but just say, Lord, all I want you to do is touch me. That's what he wants to do. He wants to touch us this morning and make us whole. Amen? And that's what these people did. And another, <clears throat> we're going to go to Mark 5, verses 25 to 24, 34. And we've, we teach this a lot of, on healing. And it, the woman with the issue of blood, she comes, she pressed thousands of people all around him. You read that in the Bible. He was having a great revival out through the lands. But what did she do? She pressed through the crowd. Sometimes we have to really press through to get healing. We're not, it's, not, it's not always instantly. Come on. I know. You know. It's not always instantly. Sometimes it takes a time. Kim just had an operation. It didn't happen overnight. It took time. And God's healing and putting things back in place. Same way with Carla over there. God's healing and putting things back in place because <clears throat> we have to believe that when we reach out and touch him, He's immediately going to operate in our lives. He's going to make us whole this morning. In Mark chapter 5, verse 41, it's another story we read, read about. Uh, in, <coughs> excuse me. In the word of God, it's Jairus' daughter. His daughter was lay, left laying so that uh, had died because he waited and prayed for the woman with the issue of blood. And he said, he said, I'm coming, but just wait. But, but the people said, well, his daughter's already dead. And Jesus said, no, that's what you know. That's what you think. People tell you, oh, that's what you think that God does that. No, you tell them, I know my God does it. Maybe not today, but believe me, he's going to come tomorrow and he's going to touch you. And that's what he was telling these people. I'm coming to see your daughter. Just hang on there. Well, he doesn't talk like we do, you know. We're all these Pennsylvania people, you know, how we talk. And we just say, just wait a minute. Just wait an hour. I'll be there. Jesus said, I am coming. And I mean, I'll be there. And he said, <clears throat> he went in and he took her by the hand and said, Little girl, I say to you, Arise. Or if you're here, sitting here this morning and you have a need, I stood up here and I, I said, God, I need you. I need your touch. Ricky needs your touch. Everybody in here needs your touch. We need to listen to God when he says, arise. Thank you. Arise, he said to her, if I say to you, arise, and immediately, if you have a need in your body this morning, and I said to you, arise, and you immediately stood up. It took you a little bit. I encouraged you a little bit. But if you have something you've been asking God for, it doesn't have to be a healing. 
No matter what you have in your life and you need God to meet that need, you rose up this morning, you're asking him and you're believing him to provide for you what you ask for. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Very obedient. I saw everybody in this place stand up. Everybody. Even except my cameraman. He's back there. <laughs> oh, he's laughing at me because he knows who I'm talking to. Amen. So anyhow, he's talking about the little girl and she got up and she was age 12. Now I'm going to back up a little bit. The woman that had the issue of blood had it for how long? 12 years. So we come on down and that's <clears throat> Jesus stops and prayed for her and healed her. Okay. So he got down comes to the little girl and he immediately prayed for her. She got up. She was, they were astonished, with great astonishment, overcome with amazement, that he healed her. But how old was she? Twelve years old. Come on. Remember, there's numbers in the Bible that you have to remember. And number 12 is one of them. Come on. It's when, <clears throat> number 12, I'm going to explain it a little bit to you here this morning. Number 12 is broken down. 3 times 4 is what? 12. Thank you. Amen. Hey, pastor, you got students in here. They believe you. You're a teacher. Amen? They didn't teach you. Somebody else did. But anyhow, God's teaching you this morning. He's been teaching us. Amen? we got to get a hold of it. And number 3 means a divine heavenly. It's a divine heavenly number. And number four means material completeness. So 12 equals three times four. Three is perfect, divine, and heavenly. And number four, completeness on this earth. Complete healing and resurrection. Grab a hold of that. Say, God, I want number 12. I want the whole thing. I don't want just half of it. I want not three parts of it. I want four parts of it. I want all 12 parts of it. I want number three and number four, and I want 12 this morning because it's completeness in him. Always remember that. Amen. In Mark <clears throat> chapter, six, uh, chapter 6, verse 56, And whether so he entered into the villages, the cities and countries, they laid the sick in the streets right in the roadway and brought, him <clears throat> brought them that he may touch them and be whole. And even all they had to do was reach out and touch the hem of his garment. They didn't, they didn't ask him to come over and lay hands on him. The people don't have to lay hands on you. If you believe, and they're telling you they believe with you, God's going to move and do a miracle in your life. Amen? He's going to take care of you. Don't think <clears throat> because you get sick, we all live in this world, and we live in this world, things are going to hit us. These two people up front here know they just come through that, and different ones and different, <clears throat> I, I want us coming through all this. But every time you get sick, all you have to do is reach out and touch him. Just like the lady, all she had to do was touch the hem of his garment, and she was healed. He didn't lay hands on her. He just said, somebody touched me. And she, when she raised her hand and she said, it was her. Go and be healed in my name. Be delivered, not just healed. He wants to deliver us this morning. He wants to do, make a completeness in our bodies this morning. And it says, when he touched the border of his garment or the fringe of the tassel, and many as touched him were made whole. That doesn't just mean Jack. It doesn't just mean Nancy. It doesn't just mean Jen. It means every one of you sitting here this morning. All you have to do is cry out and reach out and touch his garment this morning. Well, you say, well, he's not here to touch his garment. His spirit's here. Jesus walks through this place. If he, <clears throat> He'll send his angels to sit by you. Lena May, maybe there's an angel sitting by you and you don't even know it. But you do know it. You feel the presence of God. When you feel the presence of God, Tina, there could be a great big angel sitting right beside you. When I think of angels, I think of something great big like this. Do you think of angels big? Come on, be honest with me. 
you think of them coming down and they're very big and they're going to throw their wings around you or whatever they're wearing. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm just going by the Bible, okay? And they're going to wrap you in that. They're going to wrap you in his presence, not their presence, in Jesus' presence. They are their, God's ministers for you. And they're here this morning. They want to wrap their wings around you and say, hey, come on. Let's go to church. Let's find out what God has for us today. And that's what we're doing today. He, God is telling you, reach out and touch me. Touch me. Touch the hem of my garment. And you will be made whole. Amen. If you get nothing out of this lesson, learn how to be healed through the word of God. Amen. Come on. It's there. Let's go to Mark chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. And they brought to him a man. Now listen to this. We have this in our families and our homes. They brought to him a deaf man, had an impediment and with his speech that he could hardly speak, who stammered. They begged him to place his hand on the man. But did he do it in the crowd? No. No. He took him aside. He took him away from the crowd. He didn't want any of the crowd there because he knew somebody would say, well, we'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and see if this is going to happen. Believe me, when you sit in this church, there's always somebody that's not going to believe. You just go beyond that belief. What Jesus did, he just, he just said, hey, come with me. And he took him aside. He maybe do that to you even on your own. He'll say, Melissa, you're sick tonight, but you come with me. You're not feeling well? Come with me. Don't have to worry about a thousand people laying hands on you. All you need is the touch of the master this morning. Touch him. Reach out to him. He's here for you. He's here to touch you. He's here to heal you. And so he took him aside from the crowd. He put his fingers in his ears. Now, some of you went like this very well. He spit on his tongue. You, yeah. But if you knew Jesus was doing it, you'd have probably stuck your tongue away as far as you could get it. Amen, Tina. Amen. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. That's where we need to come to the point that we love God so much that no matter what he tells us to do, we're willing to do it. Even if we have to stick out our tongue and let the pastor touch our tongue. Oh, yeah. I mean, just touch your tongue. Not spit on it. Think about that. Jesus actually spit on his tongue. That took a lot of faith. It did when you think about it. And he touched his tongue. He looked up to heaven. Jesus sighed. And he saith unto him, Ephrata. You've heard that word over and over and over in your life. If you've early been in Pentecost... Probably, Jen has never heard that before. She probably, no, she's into the word of God. I know she has, but Ephrata means open up. Open and straightway, immediately. There it is again. Instantly, his ears were opened and the strings of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plainly. You don't know what God's going to do for you. What he is going to do is going to be, Plainly. Amen? You're going to be able to talk plainly. You're going to be able to hear. There's a lot of the men in this church need this healing. And I mean it. Brother Brian. Brother, um, what's his name back there? <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I was trying to think of Paul while I'm saying everything. Different ones in here need that. Just a touch of it. Jesus. Just a touch. He's, he wants to heal them. And he's going to heal them. That's what we're going to see in the next couple weeks or the next couple months. Miraculously healings that we prayed for for a long time. God is about to do it now. Amen. Not next year. Now. And we have to come to the point that we walk so close to him that we believe what God's telling us. And we have to receive it. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to go to Mark chapter 8. You notice this is all the New Testament. 20, verses 22 to 25. It says, He cometh to Bethesda, and they brought him, here it is again, a blind man. 
and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand. Now look, did he keep him in the crowd? No. So don't think because you're coming here and there's a big crowd and the evangelist is going to touch you. Maybe he's going to take your hand and take you back to the overflow. Or maybe he said, I'll just pray for you later. Don't get mad if somebody says, I'll pray for you a little bit later because they don't want everybody to hear them praying. Come on, because if there's any little wee bit of doubt in this congregation that God's not going to heal you, he could keep it from you. Come on, think about it. You don't want people coming, being with you and saying, uh, oh, God can heal you, God can heal you. No, God can, and it's going to heal me. He said, and he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town. And here he goes again. When he had spit on his eyes, now he spits on his eyes. He spit on his tongue a little while ago, amen? And God healed him. Jesus healed him. So now he's spitting on his eyes. Would you want somebody to come up and go, <laughs> Ooh, no. Uh, if, if God's going to heal me, go right ahead. Take it by the bucket full. But you in the flesh, come on. When we're in the flesh, we say, Oh, I don't even want pastor to spit in my eyes. I loved him for 60 years. Well, 64 years, actually. That's a long time, so don't, don't start counting your marriage years because it doesn't matter. Amen. You're not even married yet, but you wait. Don't start counting. Don't even count the years because they don't count. It's what you have, who you have, and where you're going. Amen. Amen. But anyhow, he spit on his eyes and he asked him if he could see anything. Well, the man probably thought, well, as soon as he spits in my eyes, I'm going to open my eyes and I'm going to see. And then the man looked up and said, I see men in the trees walking around. Well, that's not very good healing. Do you think? No. no. He's not supposed to see men as trees. He's supposed to see men as men. But he said to Jesus, <laughs> No, I see men as trees walking around. And after that, he put his hands, he touched him again upon his eyes, made him look up. Why do we have to look up? Because our God's in heaven. That's where your healing's coming from. Your healing's coming from God. It's coming from heaven. Look up and say, God, heal me. Here I am. Jesus even told them, look up. I want you to look up because I am going to heal you. My Father's going to heal you. And he said, put his hands, touch him again on his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw clearly instantly. There it is again. Instantly, not the first touch. So, so, so you come up and get prayed for, Jill, and your back didn't get better the first time. Well, you know what? The second time it will. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God wants to see where your faith is. He wants to know if you really believe that he's going to do it. Well, he is. He's here this morning. He wants to heal you. He wants to touch you. He wants to meet every one of your needs. Many times... We have to reach out and touch Jesus again. Just touch me one more time, he says. Touch me again, Lord. We sing that song, that little chorus. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me again. And sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes five seconds, maybe five hours, maybe five days. Even if it's been a couple years, don't ever give up on God. Never. Never, because he's going to be there exactly at the right time that you need him to touch you. Amen. Amen. And we're going to, I'm going on now. We're going to receive some of the blessings that we're going to talk about this morning. Mark 10, chapter, chapter 10 and 13. And they brought young children to him. Now, how many knows that when the kids come up around the altar... Some people try to push them behind, get behind me, stand over here, stand over here. People do that. I, I'm, not just, I'm not saying you people do that, okay? But people push kids out of the way. Get out of my way. You don't need God. You're just a child. Yes, they do. They need him more than what you do because they have a lifetime ahead of them. Amen? And that's what these people were doing. <coughs> 
He, they brought young children to him he, so he could touch them. But his disciples, his preachers that walked beside him, interfered that those that brought him didn't want him touching them. They, this, the adults are the only one that's important here. The, the disciples are telling Jesus, these kids aren't important. What are you bringing these kids to me for? But what did Jesus say? Huh? Come on. He said, when Jesus saw it, it says, but when Jesus saw it, he was displeased. He was in, in, indignant and angry. Do you believe that Jesus got angry? Oh, yeah. He said, well, God is, doesn't get angry. He doesn't get mad. Oh, yes, he does. You do some rotten things that you know better than what you should be doing. He gets angry at you. You know better. What's the matter with you? Straighten up. You know what I can do with you. I'm for you. And he's telling these people. He was angry. Let those kids alone. So if you see pastor up around the altar... Those kids are going to start come running. What you saw Wednesday night, right here, was the beginning of a miracle. A mighty miracle. Because there were kids here, and uh, what's your names? Shirley's grandson, (coughs) Liam, brings in a whole van load of kids. They know Shirley and Sam drive the van. Kids that don't hear about Jesus. Kids that don't know, but their mother and dad or whoever it is tells them, go stay with that lady until that van comes and picks you up and takes you to church. They don't go home from school. They go from school and wait to some lady's house for that van to pick them up. People, do you know what we have coming in here? I said to Pastor one night, do you know those kids don't even know who we are? They don't. They didn't. They had no idea who Pastor Cindy is. They had no idea who Pastor Ken was. Once in a while, they see him motivating around, but they don't see us anywhere. But Pastor Rick realized what he was doing. Were you here on Wednesday night? Come on. That was very necessary. I'm not building Pastor Cindy and Pastor Ken and I up, but you need to teach the children to have respect for God's ministry. Listen to me. Teach your kids with respect. Have them learn to respect the people in charge. I'm not building us up to be in charge. I'm telling you God's called us for that place. Those kids had no idea who I was. They had no idea. Pastor Cindy sits back there. Who's that woman? Who's he? They know Pastor Ken once in a while because he flies through and runs through, goes through and sees all the kids. But what I'm saying is you, Pastor, now my mind went by, Rick, <laughs> right in the middle of his message just before he finished up, he called the three of us to the front because he wanted them people to recognize the hand of God. Come on, they, they, the hand of God's on you guys because Kim and them teach all the kids and Jen and all of them. But these kids, these girls back here, <coughs> and I'm not building myself up, I'm telling you. I have two or three little girls back here, big girls now. They're 12, 13, 14, like I used to be one day. <laughs> but anyhow, they never leave this church. Before church, they come right here. This morning, they came right up here. Pastor Cindy saw them, and she loves it. She said, I love to see them kids coming and hugging you because she knows what they're getting. I don't have to say anything. I don't. They'll tell you. I'll just say, oh, you girls, are you being good? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. I said, then go minister to the rest of those kids over there. They're leaders in that group. So you pray for them. You pray for them. There's three of them. And they come every time before church. And they never leave this church until they come and hug me goodbye. Are you people that listen to me? Listen to me. Don't leave here without 
given Cindy a hug, me a hug, especially Pastor Ken. Oh my, don't miss Pastor Ken. Okay, that's, I can never, re, you know, man, as well as I know their names, I'll say to the pastor, what's their names? And he'll name them. I, I have a hard time with names. I never used to. Amen. They're right here. Stand up. Where's Laura? Where's the other one? Oh, she's in the nursery. <laughs> They're teachers even forgetting their names. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> But I'm telling you, these young people are important. You're important. She needs to be involved in these young people. She knows she's important to you. You need to be here when you can. I know you teach and you're, you're away from home, but you're like you're here today. You need to involve yourself with these young people because you have God so full in your life. And that's what we need even as adults. Get involved with these young kids. Because they're your church. They're not the church of tomorrow. Don't believe me. They're the church of today. And they're bringing a mighty revival. They're not saved. A lot of, they, a lot of them stood up here the other night. I, they gave their heart to the Lord. So we're going to believe that God's going to do a miraculous thing. That, that youth group's going to go from 30 to 60. Amen. I'm serious. Amen. And you're going to be involved in it. Come on. You make sure... You hug on them kids when they're here. Their parents don't know God. A lot of them. But we're here for that. We're here for their parents. We're, we're their parents here. But if they can feel the love of God here, they're going to take it home. They took that home on Wednesday night, what they got from Brother, Brother Rick. They took that home because they don't see it at home. But they will take it home and show it to their parents. And their parents are going to feel the love of God that's in this house. Come on. You're, you're, you just sit here like, <clears throat> well, I come to church. Well, you're full of God. So when you're around those kids, give them a hug. Don't be afraid of them. My goodness, they sit over here every Wednesday night. Get out of your chair from over here and go over there and hug on them. I see Jill doing it all the time. I want everybody. I want to see all of them. All of you, they're going to come to me because I come in and sit down because I can't move very fast anymore. I used to go through the whole church. When we were at the other church, 300 people. <clears throat> now, people that you were there, put your hand up. You know I'm telling the truth. I shook hands with every person Sunday morning before church. I did. I didn't care if anybody else did. I did. Because they needed to feel the love of God. That's what they need to feel from you. They don't have to know who you are, but they'll learn who you are because of what you carry and what you take to them. Young girl over here, all she wants you to do is go and say, Hi, honey, how are you doing? We're so glad you're in church today. And we are glad you're here and Mama's here. We're so glad for that family that God's brought into this house. They need to know that we as a family of God... Love them. Yes. That whole group of 30-some kids over here, they know Jan and Rick love them. They even pulled her over and prayed for her. So what does that tell you? They know God's already raising them up. Her, Shirley's grandson, God's raising him up to minister. And that other young man, he's been coming here for months. Big, big boy. How many, how many know who I'm talking about? He sits right here. On the end. And he loves the Lord. What's his name? Billy. Billy. Okay. But he comes. We need to get them in church on Sundays. Come on. Not just Wednesday. And that's good. We, we, we're getting them started. You know what I'm saying? You turn the page a little bit at a time. <clears throat> Think about it. When you read a book, if you don't read the whole, whole book, you don't know what's in the book. So that's what they need to know. They need to know who you are. They need to know how to walk. They need to know how to talk. Honestly. Because <laughs> they come from hellish families. And they don't hear godly talk. They need to know you. They need to know me. 
That's what we're here for. So grab a hold of it. Wednesday night when you come and there's a whole pile of kids back in there waiting to get something good to eat, go over and just shake their hands. Say, hey, good to see you guys here. Even our girls that come all the time. Tell them, hey, we're so glad you're here. And we are. Kim's, Kim's kids. There's work. And, and Jen's kids. All those kids that come. The little boys in the back, they have so much fun when they're here. Um, what's your names? My mind went blank. Huh? Cooper and, Cooper and Tucker. They have such a good time when they're here. Because you love on them. You let them know who they are. That's what they want to know. They want to know, am I important? If you sit here and tell me you don't think you want to be important, you're lying. You want somebody to know who you are. So why? How much more? Do these kids need you to know that you love them? So Wednesday night or tonight when they're here, they, these girls, they run around and shake hands with everybody now. They didn't used to, right, Kim? But now they do when we have time of fellowship. And that's so important. They've learned that. They've learned to hug on you. They've learned to shake your hand. Return it before they even give it to you. Come on, return it. And it'll return back to you. It's God's morning. It's God's morning. I don't even know where I am now. But God wants you to love on them kids. He wants you. Jesus said, don't. He got, he got angry. If he, hey, somebody says, oh, go get out of here. <clears throat> Let these kids alone. You just tell them, no way. God wants me to hug them. God wants me to talk to them. You tell the person if they push you away, say, no, no, no. You're not pushing me away. You come over here and help hug on them. Come on. The more hugs they get, the better it is. <coughs> Amen. So anyhow, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Don't stop the children when they're worshiping God and when they want God the way our kids have been. I have down here, never stop the children, for such is the kingdom of God. You said, well, they're kids, so are you. Yeah. You're kids. You're in God's house. When you're, go when you're in God's kingdom, you're a kid. Yeah, you are. Right, Lorraine? You're a kid. I want to be a kid all my life. Don't tell me how old I am, because I don't want to know. You all, come on, don't sit there and lie. You feel for the same way sometimes. Just let me alone and don't tell me how old I am. Don't remind me how old I am. Right, Nancy? Don't remind us how old I am. But anyhow, I, I can pick on Nancy because she's older than I am. Just five months. <laughs> no, six months. Six months, huh? <laughs> no. It doesn't matter if it's six months, six years, 20 years, 30 years. You're their family. They love you. They want to be part of you, and you want to be part of them. That's what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. Let these kids, new kids, all the kids, the kids that come all the time, our kids that sit back here all the time, Jen's kids, all the kids, let them know you love them and that you care. That's all they want to do. Well, they snub me. Well, shake their hand and keep on going, and then come back again. Because eventually, I see one back here, and I'm not going to name him. But he finally is happy and jumping around playing volleyball. Before he used to just... And he's one of a regular youth. Come on. They want to know you love them and yet you care. That's what I'm trying to get through to you this morning. Let them know all that, okay? Anyhow, Jesus said... Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God, listen to this, as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands and touched, and touched upon them, and he blessed them. Jesus blesses each one of us this morning. We're his children. That's what we're here for. He wants to bless you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. That's why I'm giving you all these scriptures. You say, well, we don't need all that scripture. Oh, yes, you do. Some of you don't even read your Bible, so how would you know? Okay? 
but we need to learn that he wants to bless us. As children, not because you think you are somebody. These guys get on TV and they think they're big shots. Well, excuse me, I'll tell them what. When you go back, you were born the same way I was. That's because you got a little education under your belt. Pastor has eight years college under his belt. You would never know it most of the time. Would you? Come on. Be honest. He doesn't walk around like he's a... He's got a master's degree. He's got all this stuff. But he don't care. He's tried... Listen to me. This is the flesh in him now, okay? He's tried to get all those certificates out in the old house tried it, put them on the wall, God took them, made them take them back down. I didn't know, it wasn't too long ago. He thought, well, he tried it again. Well, God said, no, I don't want those. I don't want that. All I want is you. That's what he's telling you. He doesn't care what kind of a degree you have. He wants you. And he wants me. He wants every one of those youth. He wants every one of those little wee kids. He doesn't care what kind of an education you have. He likes because you do that. That's a good thing. I'm not coming against that. I think it's great Pastor has <clears throat> eight years of college and I don't have any. Does that tell you anything? I tried one time in Bible school to go and they canceled the teacher so I didn't get have, even have one class in Bible school. So, see, God didn't care. He didn't care. He cares about you is what I'm telling you this morning. You're a child of God, and he cares about each one of you. Come on. Now, where was I? I lost my place. <laughs> okay, I'm going back up to Luke 6, 17 and 18. A large crowd of people came out of all Judea and Jerusalem to hear him and be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed or tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought him and struggled to touch him. For there went virtue and power out of him and healed them all. He wants to heal all of us. He wants to heal everybody. He wants to heal every sinner. He wants the sinners to come to him. And that's what's saying here. In Luke 7, verses 11 to 17, they carried a dead man out of the city in the name, the son of the only son of his mother, she was a widow. And much people were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. He didn't care where she came from, where the son came from. He loved her. And he reached out to her. And he said, weep not. And he came and touched the coffin. And the bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And then that he has, <clears throat> excuse me, and he that was dead sat up, began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And listen to this. Great fear came on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. That's what he wants us to see this morning. He's here. He visits us. He, he goes with you to your home. You're not just here with God. You're everywhere. Everywhere you walk, God is with you. In Luke 22, 39, 50, I ended up with this. It's the Garden of Gethsemane. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and he healed him right then and there. Isn't God miraculous? He's miraculous this morning. And what did he tell Jesus tell them to do? Told them to rise to your feet and to worship him. Arise, thank you, Jill, to your feet and worship him. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Your life will never be the same. This is, of course, what we sing. There's only one way to touch him. That's believe when you call on his name. Amen. Do you believe this morning? Yes. Do you believe? Amen. We're going to see mighty things happen in this church right now, not a year from now. 
now, if you come and you're praying and you're believing and you know God is going to do it. You have to bring them in. You have to bring them in. Come on. you got to bring them in. Even if they're, even if they're sitting in a dead, dead church, Jill, say, come on, go with me. We're going to see a church grow through your ministry. Amen. They're going to come. They're going to come. And the, the rest of the song says, he touched me, and oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. He touched me. Put your finger up here. He touched me and made me whole. Did he make you whole today? Amen. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.